you guys are going through some pretty crazy times right now. Crazy times, crazy times. How are you? Doing very well. Uh, been worried because of this ISIS attack in, in Russia. I'm so afraid. And then I read about that, oh, the Ukrainians, they created a gate for them to escape. And it's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I hope this doesn't really ex- you know, explode into something else. Me, me too. I haven't had time to really study it yet, but I'm conscious of the fact that I'm sure they're trying to make it into something that's not, something on behalf of the Ukrainians. So, yeah. What have you been up to lately? Just trying to feed people, man. Yep. Just, uh, it's, it's, it's a simple life. We got a lot of people coming in and coming out, so I can't get my hands on enough product. Yeah, the, um, we, we, we hear about the starvation that's going on in Gaza, but I, I don't hear of what's happening in Ukraine when it comes to feeding people. Yeah, it's interesting that you say that um, because, you know, as time has gone on, for us anyway, uh, it, it, you know, yes, there's the things in the air that the obvious danger, which, which attract people's attention, especially here in her son, but, but here in her son, especially, um, you know, it's, it's poverty, you know, at this point, mm-hmm. um, it, you know, where, 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 the, I mean, how, how are you going to eat? These people were occupied by the Russians, those places that were occupied like this, the Russians took everything, jacked up the prices on the stuff that's necessary, depleted their savings. And then you have uh, a period where, you know, yeah, you're getting shelled all the time, but you know, 90% of the population leaves. There's no economy here. There's no jobs whatsoever. And how do you live if uh, you're not getting assistance from the government, which is paltry, and there's no foreign humanitarian assistance, which there's all but nothing here. Uh, you can do that for three months, six months, nine months, but it's been 15 months. Yep. So it's a real, it's it's a, we're seeing a lot of that here. Yeah, yeah. I was just reading an article about that, how you, you, we've pushed beyond three years now, and it's it's like, oh my God. I mean, some, something has got to bend, and then and then for the our own U.S. government here to not even, you know, uh, look at Ukraine with this, what was it, a $1.2 trillion bill that they just passed, and, and none of yeah. it is going to Ukraine? It's, you know, it's, I think about this all the time. It's funny, you know, the, the people here, uh, that's, 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 it's always been the big thing on their mind, right? You know, I mean, it really is simple. If we help them, they'll win. If we don't, uh, it's going to be difficult. It doesn't look great. So from the beginning, being an American here, you know, just, it's just the one question everybody wanted to ask you. And up until recently, you know, I've been able to say, you know, we're, we're, we're behind you. We're going to help it now. That's all the you know, American politics is, is what I talk about here at the free store at the front people coming in. But, um, so yeah, I, you know that's a big, big deal. It's already affected a lot of people, and uh, if people back home, and this is uh, you know, if it's not going to stop, you know, it's it's this isn't something that we we don't have a choice whether we're going to whether whether we want to be involved here or not. Uh, you know, Putin's not going to stop; he's going to keep going. So it's we're going to get involved at some point, and and better to help the Ukrainians fight 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 the fight really on behalf of the world than than what comes if if we don't, you know. So what what are they saying about Americans uh, when when they come into the store? Well, I, you know, they uh, on the they, they as I explained to them, the American people stands firmly behind them. I mean, they're they're very, uh, I mean they they're very grateful to the American people. Mm-hmm. Christina on our team, Maxime on our team, local Hersonsky, Dell. I mean they 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 speak effusively in praise of the American people. The American politicians. They have a lot of questions about, and I don't have great answers. I, you know, but you know, who do you think it'll be, Trump or Biden? I mean, they're they're concerned about the election because, uh, I mean, for a lot of these people, they feel like it dictates their future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me ask you a question: Have you heard of a band called Chase the Comets? <laughs> I have not. Should I have? Well, I, I I'm glad that you that you asked that question in that way because uh, this coming Monday, I've got an interview with this Russian band who escaped Russia to go raise money in in Ukraine for the people. Wow. And and so wow. and I thought okay, what are the chances that that you had you know, heard of or or maybe one day now that we've mentioned it that you're going to meet up with this band Chase the Comet. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah, I haven't uh the Russian bands aren't really at the top of the uh at, at, at the, but I guess if they if they if they they've left Russia come here to help the Ukrainians maybe uh yeah I'll probably be hearing about them <laughs> we could we could use some art here Arrow <laughs> <laughs> if you get the chance to Google them or anything like that you're going to be fascinated with their sound because it there there's just something about it that makes you go I get it I know why they want to share it with a land that's been ripped apart that's awesome that's great good for them that's awesome yeah so then how does art get rebuilt in a community that's been ripped by by war. It's a great question, and I can't 
I uh, can't wait to see how, um, but I know it will. We don't, you know, folks here don't have the luxury of that right now because it's, you know, we'll, they'll think about our, they, they figure out how to get the basics of life, you know, how they're going to eat, uh, you know, basic food products, basic medicine, basic, you know, the basic needs of life. People here are just holding on for dear life here in Kherson uniquely. Um, in other parts of Ukraine, it's obviously a different story. It's, it's, it's not great. Missile strikes in different cities, but here, these people are literally on fire every day. I mean, today alone, I don't know, uh, you know, I mean, there's 50 or 60 shells coming into the, you know, certainly where we are in, in this part of Kherson, uh, up, you know, downtown. So so we don't talk about art a lot. We talk about where we're going to find, you know, the next meal, you know, where these people can get humanitarian aid next. But as you know, uh, you know, art's part of life, and these people are committed to living. And so uh, I don't know, I don't know where it's going to, how they're going to rebuild the art. And Russians have stolen a lot of it, but but these people are, are committed to coming back and I, I don't know when it's going to happen arrow, but it's going to be beautiful, man. It's going to be beautiful. When I was a child, we would have uh, um, atomic bomb drills. Um, the, now Putin again, the, in the past couple of weeks, it keeps bringing up that darn nuclear bomb. And, and it's like, that scares the crap out of me. Yeah. Yeah. It's I mean, people are, um, yeah, people, people are nervous. I mean, it's, it's it scares me. Uh, you know, I mean, at this, at this juncture with the escalating rhetoric and I mean, it's, it, it sure feels like, uh, he's been working up to this point. And that's, you know, I didn't know a lot about this before we got involved in, in the war, but, you know, the, the history goes way back here. Of course, you know, the Ukrainians refer to what we refer to as the war, as, as the full-scale invasion. And they do that because it really began many, many years ago, back in 2014, as you probably know, and the, the, the revolution of dignity, uh, you know, Putin annexed the Crimea back in Crimea back in 2014, and so uh, the separatists fighting in the east in 2014. So it's been building since then, and it, I I agree. It, it it sure seems like it sure seems like it's uh it's very Hitlerian, you know, uh, mm-hmm. you know, s- sort of forcing it upon us. But uh, yeah, it's, it's very feeling. It's not a great feeling. Is it in the t- conversation about uh, uh, the way that NATO is expanding? I mean, because if, if NATO is going to expand, I can sure, you know, feel in my heart that Russia is going to want to expand as well. Yeah, I, I think that that's that's uh, it's, it's certainly at least implicit in the conversation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They tend to be dominated by U.S. politics in the upcoming election. And I think implicitly, uh, I believe that the kind of go as America goes Um Concerned. I mean, you know, if, if Trump you know, you know, makes it NATO, if that happens, then obviously that is a ripple effect. So, I mean, you know, Sweden joining NATO, that's that's great. Um, I don't know that that moves the needle a whole lot in terms of the, you know, the punch that, you know, NATO's punch, but but that's certainly a good thing. Um, but it's it's the rhetoric, certainly, at this point, as you pointed out, is is that of a, uh, always, you know, we're on the brink of World War Three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the hell that you're living right now in Ukraine, how's your relationship with God? Uh, it's never been better. <laughs> it is, uh, uh, it, it, well, well, let me let me say this, Eric. That's just my perspective. Uh, I, I hope that he would. No, I mean, look. Uh, you know, it's interesting. It, it's I could talk for a long time about this, and I, I'll, I'll try and be brief. But in, in a word, it's uh, never felt closer. Put it this way, Arrow. There's a lot of I have a lot of occasion to pray here. Yeah. And uh, uh, both, both, both good and bad. Um, I cry every single day here, oh. um, and you know that's not so. But most of the time, uh, they are uh, tears of joy. Uh, I feel very, uh, you know, I've never been happier, and that's somewhat paradoxical. Uh, the whole experience has a way of reminding you what's important in life, as you might imagine. And um, and when you realize that, uh, you know, what you have. And you, you know, things I took for granted in the past, uh, it inspires a whole new round of gratitude. And uh, I'm sorry for the people of Ukraine who, uh, you know, sort of the, the conditions that have had to exist to give me the opportunity to use the talent, skills, and gifts that God gave me uniquely, just like He gives every, you know, everybody. Else. It just so happens that I happen to be, you know, one of the folks uh, that can be especially 
uh, effective in this kind of environment. Um, and I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity to, 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 to do good, but, um, it's, it's very important. That relationship has grown immensely. And I'm very grateful for that. Yeah. Are, are you documenting any of this in a book or on videos? And the reason why I bring that up is because I just did an interview this past week with a gentleman that uh, bought a ghost town out in death Valley and he's documented everything on YouTube. And I, I'm sitting here thinking, God, I wonder if Ben is doing this too, so that the world can experience what it is that you're seeing. question thank you for that question Eric. so 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 i am i started out kind of informally uh i mean you know look i, I didn't all i did was buy a ticket to go to the border when the war broke out uh, it was one week i thought i could be you know i spoke russian i uh, had some time i thought i could be helpful but i didn't know i've never done anything like this before you know i was a kind of small town lawyer uh once i got to the border and I, I i saw i mean just just very starkly I could uniquely be of assistance um, given my unique, you know, I checked a lot of boxes, not many people checked. So from that point forward, it was just, you know, there, there was no plan. There could be no plan. So uh, it was just, what can I do? And, and the need's insatiable. So it's all, how can I help more? How can, how can we help more? How can we help, you know, how can we help broader, deeper? And, you know, one thing just led to another in my wildest dreams. I never thought that two years later, I'd, you know, co-found, uh, you know, I'd have, I have, Person living just over a couple of kilometers from the front, the only foreign humanitarian organization uh, in, in, a, in a place that's extremely needy. You know, I, that was never, there was never, the point was just to help. So along the way, yes, at first it was just, you know, put it on Facebook because the hope was, uh, I mean, here's the formula. Let's just do some good, hope that there's some other good people in the world that they'll see it, that they'll want to support it, yeah. they might contribute, we can do more good. And it's just organically expanded like that. It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's re-inspired me. I mean, really giving me, ironically, hope in humanity that there are those people that exist. So uh, um, there have been, uh, you know, at some point when we got kind of, when I realized this was my purpose and passion, I got a little more serious about it. So it's a little bit on Facebook. It's a little bit, but I did I did kind of roughly, uh, I'm in the process of having that discussion with uh, somebody that knows more, more than me about this stuff. I, I, I've, I've done uh, the rough out, outline. It works, but it's not, I mean, the point but the priority is not to help people yeah this past week I, I spent some time with a Vietnam War veteran and I, I thanked him for his time and he goes you know there used to be a time where people did not thank us they were against us how do you think people are going to react when you come back home that's a great question you asked some really good questions arrow um, and I, I I hadn't thought about that I don't know that I uh, that I much, I much care. And I don't mean to be defiant in that. I mean, I know that what we're doing here is uh, good. I don't know how, you know, we're, we're humanitarians and we're here helping humans. And I don't know in what context that could ever, and you know, we're not uh, here fighting in the conflict. I think that the, the, you know, it's, it's a righteous cause the Ukrainian you know, conflict. I support the cause. We're here helping people that, that don't have the things we have. So I don't, I don't know what kind of negative reaction there could be to that kind of thing. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I, I don't know that uh, I know what I'm I know I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, it's hard, hard, hard work, but it's the most important work I've ever done or will do. So I, I don't know. Uh, I, 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 that's a great question. Yeah. Um, when yeah, it, a really good question. When it comes to supplies and food, what, how can people here help you there? Thank you so much for that question. So, uh, I guess it's the answer everybody gives, but money sure is is, is helpful. It is uh, worldaidrunners.ua, uh, and we can donate there. Uh, we're also on Instagram, uh, my personal Facebook, Ben Dusing, and, uh, and and there's other there's other links. Uh, my personal Instagram, but you know what we really need is food, uh, basic food stuffs, basic medicine, basic clothing for these folks, um, and, and and basic hygiene products. So any and all proceeds, 100% of it goes to purchase that stuff. We have relationships with, we can buy things in Ukraine. Frankly, it's cheaper to do that. We don't have to export or anything. The areas that, uh, and we can drive an hour north to Mikolaev and we've got relationships there and get bulk pricing. So that's really the best way to help. Beyond that, you know, prayers and support, encouragement, uh, don't underestimate the, the value of that. But, uh, you know, that, that, that kind of support for these people here would be greatly appreciated. The website, one more time. It is a worldaidrunners.ua, uh, and uh, maybe the easiest way is just Ben Dusing. It's D-U-S-I-N-G on uh, Facebook and Instagram. We have World Aid Runner sites as well, but they're kind of nascent. We didn't, 
you know, we're, we're just a bunch of volunteers that got accumulated too many people and things not to get organized. So we're kind of catching up on the organizational side, but uh, World Aid Runners dot UA then uh, doing uh, on, on Facebook. Excellent, yes, sir. Dude, you've got to come back to this show anytime in the future. You know the door is open, and I know that our paths are going in in several different directions at the same time. But then when we have a moment like this, it's like okay, God said, okay, this is it. This is the moment. Well, I appreciate it so much. You're a good man. The questions you asked are uh, poignant, and 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 your, your your audience. I mean, we all care about this. We all care about humanity. Uh, that's what it's about here. We're just trying to help human beings. If you're a human being, you have a stake in what we're doing. And uh, certainly if you believe in something bigger than yourself, uh, everything about every kind of faith and the most basic precepts we believe in, uh, we have, they don't, we have a moral obligation to help them. And, 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 and there are good people. So thank you so much for the opportunity to talk about these things. We'll get together very soon. Thank you, my friend. All right, man. You be brilliant today, okay? You too, just like always. God bless. Slava Ukraine.